Welcome to the next lecture of our course Selenium with CSharp.net and in this lecture we'll be talking about page object model in Selenium. So what is this page object model in Selenium? Page object model is a design pattern that has become popular in test automation for enhancing test maintenance and reduce code duplication. So this is the major theme for going to page object model itself. So if you have heard about POM or page object model, then this is one of the most important concept to be understood while working with Selenium automation testing. Because page object model achieves the test maintenance and reducing code duplication using so many different amazing features that you can see as an advantages over here. So one of the first advantage is if the UI changes, only the page object code needs to be updated, not the whole test. So while I tell about the page object code, you'll probably understand this much, much easily if I just show you an example over here. So as you can see, we have this particular test, which has got the driver initialization and it is also navigating to the URL. And also it performs the operation by identifying a locator or something like this. So as you can see, this is the locator and we have got an action to perform click and send keys, something like that. And you will also notice that this locator has the hard coded values over here, like login link or username and passwords over here. So these values could potentially change any point of time. For example, if the developer thinks that the login link, probably the L should be in capital letter, or he just changed it to LGN link, something like that, then you have to go back into the code and then change the whole test. And what if you have copy pasted the same code in multiple different tests as we did over here? As you can see, the same login link I have used in more than three tests over here. So this could be a problem as well. So if tomorrow this particular identifier is gonna change, then I have to go back and change in all these tests as well, which we can easily avoid if we write all these locators and the operations in a separate class file, like a page object class file, something like this. And I will talk about the page object locators as well as the class files in much greater detail once we get into the demo. But now you have got the idea that we can move all the locators into a separate class file so that while we have talked about this UI change, only the page object model codes needs to be updated, not the tests itself, because your test may have the same locators multiple times being used. If you change in one place like page object model code class file, then your whole code will change automatically. And then page object model division between the test code and the page specific code is very, very obvious. Because as you can see, we have our test codes sitting over here and all the locators as well as the test itself. I mean, we have not added any assertions so far, but while we do the assertions, it is going to be sitting, I mean, the locators are going to be sitting along with the assertions itself, which is also a problem. Rather, we can actually move all of them in a separate class file and that way it is going to divide the test code versus the page specific code. And finally, all the services or operations offered by the pages are housed in a single repository, avoiding the scattering of tests across all of them. So that is the other major advantage of page object model. Well, as that said, we have already discussed about this consideration of this example and the page itself. And now the question is, how is my test going to look like? once I modify everything with a new page object model code. Well, the code will then turns out to be something like this. As you can see, all I'm trying to do here is I'm going to be pretty much initializing the driver and then navigating to the URL. But then I just have to initialize the page and then I perform the operations over here. I don't really have any locator itself. You may be asking, what is this click login method or the login method? Where are these methods been written? Well, I'm not showing you this slide. As you can see over here, I performed a click login operation and I have written it as a method so that it is just gonna use those locators over here. And similarly, the login operation is gonna be just called as if like a method, and then it's gonna perform the login operation by performing three different operations in one just single method. I will show you all these things in a demo so that you can understand them more clearly. Well, for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new class file within our project second time in this course so far. So I'm going to go ahead and add a class directly over here. And then I'm going to call this as probably a page. Guess what? Before even I do that, I'm going to go ahead and add a directory here or new folder here. I'm going to call this as pages. So this is the best pattern that we always use that all the pages should be sitting under a separate folder. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a new class file. I'm going to call this as login page probably. And then I'm going to hit add. 
So this is going to add a login page.cs file for me over here. And within this particular page, I'm actually going to start implementing the code that we have already written probably. So as you go to our test code over here, you can see that in order to perform a click operation here, I used to do driver of by login of login link, something like this, right? So this is the identifier that I have used. And once I pass this particular identifier, it is going to start working with it. I mean, I'm not going to use the custom method code so far because there is going to be a change coming pretty soon. I'm just going to use the classical code that we have already written before the custom methods are being used. So I'm just going to use the same approach over here. So for writing the page object model in, if you are from the Java background, you may be using what is called as a page factory, factory class file. But in C sharp, the page factory is being deprecated and we don't really use that anymore. Just keep this in mind. You don't really have to get confused when I just talk about page factory without even showing you that because those are completely deprecated. So I'm not really going to show you that rather this is the way which you're going to see it right now is the actual pattern that we need to be using in C sharp code. So for working with the page object model code, the first thing you need to do is, is you need to create a constructor and within this constructor, because we need the iWebDrivers object, pretty much like how we did for the custom method while we were trying to create as like these, we need that as well. So I'm gonna say iWebDriver of the driver over here. And once we have this, we are then going to hit control dot, which is gonna show you that it is gonna create an assign property or create or assign a field I'm just going to say assign a field over here. So once I do that, you see that it is, has assigned a field over here, which I'm going to be actually using within my code over here. So the first thing is once I have this particular driver and now if I go back to my code, you see that for login operation, we actually use this driver dot find element by login link, something like that. So I'm going to do the exact same thing over here as well. I'm going to actually use the same operation using the driver over here, but I am actually going to store that within a property of the login link itself. So I'm going to say I web element of login link. But once I do that, if I put an is equal to here, you see that the driver is going to be complaining here and it says that driver is not null here. So what does that really means? What we're trying to do over here is if you put an is equal to over here, you're essentially telling that you're going to be assigning the value into this particular variable, which you can't just do that in the class file, something like this. Rather, we're actually going to use it like a property, a shorthand of property, which you can do using the Lambda expression, something like this. I know it is a bit confusing at the start, but you'll get used to it once you start writing the code. So this is the first way that you can do it. But if you hit control dot, you can also see that you can use a block body for the property, something like this. So this is how the code should have been before, but I have written it in the shorthand form using the Lambda expression, which is the equal to with a greater than symbol. So that is how I have used. So this is the property that we're essentially trying to create, but this is the shorthand of actually doing it. So I'm basically creating a property here for the particular login link. And similarly, I have to do it for the username and password as well. And the way I'm going to do it for the username is I'm going to use the iWeb element of txt or text uh, username, something like that. And then I'm going to use the Lambda expression. I'm going to say driver dot find element by dot ID of username and the N is a capital letter. And similarly, I can do it for the password as well. And finally, I also need to do it for the BTN login. So for that, I'm just gonna say BTN or BTN login. And it is going to be using the CSS selector, if I'm not wrong, and the class name was BTN. So that is how we actually identified. So now that we have all the identifiers sitting over here in this particular class file, which is awesome, so we can get rid of all these locators that we have got in this particular class file, right? But guess what? We also need to perform the operation over here. So in order for performing the operation like click or find element or send keys with the admin and the password, I actually need to write the methods over here. So basically in this particular login page, 
you not only have the locators but you also hold the operation so basically you are abstracting the whole operation of an ui of the page in one single class file so this is more readable maintainable and also it's very neat so that you can just call the method for that specific page so now we, what we did actually within our code over here is we actually performed clicking the login link for the first time and then we did all these operation over here to just perform the data entry and clicking the button to perform a login operation so these are the two operations that we did we clicked the login button and then we performed the login operation itself so for that i'm actually going to write a method like this i'm going to say public void click login and within this login i'm not going to pass any of the parameter rather i'm actually going to just say login link dot click so this is what i actually did over there and once i perform a click operation the login then i enter the username and password so how do i enter the username password i'm actually going to write another method and i'm going to call this as public void login and for the login i actually need the username and password so i need to pass them as a parameter like username and password so this way i can pass those value within this particular method while i call them and for entering the username and password we actually have got our controls over here so i'm just going to say txt user dot send keys of the username and similarly txt password dot send keys of the password so this way it's going to enter the username and password and finally we need to click the button so i'm going to say btn login dot submit which is going to perform the submit operation or the click operation for me for this particular button so you can see that we have performed quite a lot of operation already in these two methods over here so this way now you may notice that our code that we have written over here for the unit test one is going to tremendously reduce by just calling the particular page object model code i'm really not going to go deep into that particular operation yet i'm going to talk about the same in our next video but you have already got the idea of how we have to do all these operations in this particular code